I got the boys with me, Nate and Luke, we're heading down to get a car wash for the BRV. Now this has been one of the things that people have asked me to do a video on, so I thought I'll do a video on it today. We call it the BRV because that's what it is, it's a big red van. It's a 2014 Chevy Express Duramax diesel, 6.6 .6 liter. They stopped making them in 2016, so it's one of the last few uh, years that they made this model. And I, and I like it, right? I don't love it. I like it. And I'll tell you why. So one thing right off the bat, and you might even hear it, it's quite noisy when you're driving around. This van has kind of a, you know, a loud road noise sound to it. So you probably don't see us doing many videos here in the van because it just, it's just too loud. Another thing, and this maybe even be the top part of the list, is that this mug gets stuck all the time. We call it the one wheel drive van because when you get on something slippery, one wheel starts driving, all the rest are just staying there. Yeah, it's not cool. Now, when we have the trailer hooked up to it, we have quite a bit of weight on the back, so that helps a lot, but we've still been stuck with the trailer. I've been stuck without the trailer too many times to count. Another thing I don't like about the van, and I don't want to be like all down about the van. Now, it has the Duramax diesel engine, but it does not have an Allison transmission. So, if you know anything about the Chevys, the Duramax with the Allison is a pretty sweet setup. But when you have a Duramax without an Allison, they need to tone the engine down so you don't blow the transmission up. Coming from an excursion, which these this was kind of rated the same as the excursion foot-pounds wise, the excursion just had more power than this thing does. So I, I'm thinking the fact that they had to limit it actually you know, made it so that it wasn't as strong as it could be. One of the things we really like is that it's got lots of room. Yeah, I'm right here. So this is a 12 passenger van, so we can have 10 people back there. So that's pretty nice. As you know, we are expecting another little guy, and so he'll fit back there no problem. If it was the excursion, we'd be pretty tight. I think at this point, we are in the only vehicle that will work for us, other than other than a six door pickup truck, which is my dream. It's chilly. Right. Maybe it'll warm up. This is how I like to wash the BR. Yeah. Here's the secret for you. That's why I like to come here. I like to put them on wax. Yeah. Right like that. And I put it on wax and then I spray right underneath the car. Because the wax has a little bit of water repellent to it. Especially up here, you know, in the Wisconsin and that. Just wrapped up the vacuum of the BRV. One thing I like about this BRV is that the floor is a vinyl floor. There's no carpeting in, in here. So it's really easy to clean up. The kids can drag in just about anything and we could just, just wash it right up. So we're gonna head home here, but before we do, we're gonna stop by Wendy's. Put out this thing where you could buy these little Wendy's tags, right? And get a free Junior Frosty. So anytime we roll by Wendy's, we can get six Junior Frosties for free. Wanna do that, guys? Yeah. Would you like one too? I'm sorry, I can't give you one over the camera. If the GoPro had a slot for a Junior Frosty, I'd put it in there for you. Now that we are home and we got those guys, the Junior Frosties, let me show you a little bit around the BRV, but let me get my hat back on first because it's cold out here. This year's a 2014 Chevy Express one ton Duramax diesel van. When we're towing, we get about 11 to 13 miles per gallon with this, so it does pretty well as far as fuel economy goes. One thing about this van is that it has the DEF fluid since it's a 2014. Uh, that is a little bit mixed for me because I don't like having to you know, fill this up every now and then, but I do like how it doesn't smell as much as our Ford Excursion did. Especially in the winter time, when we would use the Ford Excursion, it would, it would have that diesel smell and it'd be really strong. But this thing, 
doesn't really have a smell at all. It really has more like a bleachy smell. Some people will ask me, well, are you gonna delete it? And I say, well, maybe, but after it's out of warranty. So right now it's still at 76,000 miles. So it's still in the factory warranty. So we'll see when we get to 100,000, if we still have this, will I delete it? Uh, a couple things that I might wanna do with this van is get four wheel drive for it. So about, for about $12,000, you can get a four wheel drive you know, kit put on. And then I think this van would be pretty sweet. Now, if I was to go totally MacGyver on this van, I would try to do the four wheel drive and see if it would be possible to put an Allison transmission in it because then I would chip it and then give it full power. This van would be unbelievable if it was at full Duramax power capability. Oh, uh, we have had a deer hit the front, but they got it all fixed up really nicely for us. Um, the only thing I really did on the outside were add these extending mirrors. And I think you've seen these before, like Last Junk More Journey had the exact same ones. I think because it's virtually the only type of mirror you could get for this van. I really wanted to get a pair of slide out ones like we had on the excursion, but I could not find them anywhere. These are just okay because they bounce around. You have to, you know, tweak them all the time. We have the, the hitch that came with the van. 10,000 pounds uh, towing capacity on this van. I would say that this van, when towing, is more stable than the Excursion was. Uh, you really can just put one hand on the wheel and cruise with it. That's probably the main reason why we were able to do those 18 hour days, because it, it is somewhat comfortable, but it doesn't just sway all over the all over the road. This is a one ton van and the springs underneath it are very strong, especially on the back. Uh, it, when it's unloaded, if I don't take some of the air out of the back tires, the kids will bounce and almost hit their head right on the ceiling. So it is a very heavy duty van. One thing I really like about this van is uh, it's got this battery under here. This is one of the, like the secondary battery. And I don't know if you could see it, but they got the, the battery connectors right there. So since the battery's right there, I like to be able to uh, pull out my portable compressor and just hook it up right there, set it on the ground. I could go around, do all the tires. I can even stretch it back and get the tires in the back without having to mess with opening the hood and all of that. So there's a couple modifications I made to the inside of this van. You'll notice me using this type of plywood a lot. This is a 3 8 plywood. You can tell by the, the, the how many plies it's got. One, two, three. Three little plies on it. And what I love about this stuff is that it's pretty strong and it's really lightweight. So I will use this quite a bit. And so I got a box here that I created uh, to hold my tools. So all the heavy stuff is right here. And I got my air compressor, uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff. Just about every tool that I bring when we're on the road fits in this section right here like for instance you can see that there's a tire iron thing for doing wheels on the camper uh, i got a little shovel right here that's cool i got a sawzall back there um, i got one of those angle grinders the battery powered one in here too so lots of stuff um, usually this ball sits kind of back there but i used it not too long ago so i put it here this section right here is usually for gadgets and a lot of times I'll put my camera gadgets in here. You can see I got a uh, tripod back there. Duct tape, of course. I always got to have duct tape. My gloves, the gloves that I love, active armor. I love these gloves. Not super warm, but they do good enough, you know, to keep the edge off. And I got my uh, miscellaneous wire stuff here. Usually I'll have a green bin and I'll have a bunch of stuff in it, like um, extra batteries and, you know, USB things and all that stuff. Uh, right over here on the side, I got a couple eyelids with a bungee cord. I have our cool ladder here. I have this just because I was in Tennessee setting up all the wireless stuff at our place down there. And usually what we put here is a backpack to carry Lojo and now to carry the new baby. And one of those umbrella strollers, you know, they're just small. And we put that here, that here and strap it up and boom, we're good to go. One cool thing about this van is that the back seat 
is a split seat. So you can actually take this part out. And usually when we're traveling, we will take this out and just leave it home. And so we have this whole section right here that we could put stuff. Uh, comes in handy if we wanna take the bike somewhere. So we can take them out of the camper, just throw them in here. And then when we get there, we can just unfold them all and take a bike ride wherever we want. So that's really neat. And we still have plenty of room because that sets six seats right there plus two so that's eight we'll be able to do that still by taking this out if we don't want to use it but we just have it here right now it's a good place to store it you know so it's not in the garage and getting all dusty and everything pretty much the back let me bring you to the side show you what i got here i really like those doors i like these doors much better than like a sliding door kids can operate them really well uh we got the three benches one two three uh they will seat three people but when you have three people in them it gets kind of tight so we do one two three four and then five well now we'll have to do probably one two three four five six you know we'll see how that goes it's got the vinyl floor so it's a little dirty right now he's got you can see the salt and stuff from from the boys just playing around when we were at the car wash but what's nice with this is that i can take a rag and just wipe it out and it gets all cleaned up no problem one thing one thing that we will always travel with traction cables chains um look a, a quick story i took this out west uh to go hunting we ended up hitting a deer came all the way back got the excursion went all the way back out to continue the hunting trip so on the way back out it started snowing the excursion and i and our camper got stuck in the Bighorn Mountains going up. So I had to put chains on. Chains worked really well. But that's why we carry chains in this van. I have used these on this van a couple times. Actually to move the camper over here, I put them on the van, hooked up in the grass over there and then pulled it out. And so the chains actually really help. Um, it just gives that one tire the grip so that the other tire gets into the mix too. Definitely recommend it. If you have a van like this, they're cool to have. They fit in a little box. Go around front and I'll show you where I sit. We'll show you the cockpit area of the BRV. This is a RAM mount for my phone. I just screwed it right into the dash because I will always use a mount for my phone. And I have my phone with one of those magnetic things just stick it right there really handy i love how that works this here is our gopro mount and so we actually somebody people have asked me about this before uh, but really what this is is just the top of the gopro box so when you buy a gopro and they give you this uh little the little plastic thing and they put it on the box and it has these two little these feet on it so i just took it off and i stuck it right there and that's what we use to record when we're driving around we have a camera it kind of serves a dual purpose when we were traveling around the west in 2015 i had a guy in a motorhome one of those rented motorhomes come by cross over the line and his mirror hit my mirror and just smashed it all to pieces right and i said hey dude you were over the line he was like no i wasn't he was from norway or something actually so at that moment i knew i wanted a, a dash cam installed so it helps for liability type of stuff and if something crazy was to happen like a deer was to come out and i wanted to do a video about it i know that i have the dash cam footage always there we have uh an aftermarket radio here it works okay it's not anything special i wish we had apple carplay on it but we don't um we got onstar and i have pushed that once and they said hey you gotta have a subscription so that was the last time we pushed it and then we got the standard stuff and then we got the box right here okay so here's the idea behind the box we wanted a spot to put things. Now, we don't have much in the box right now because we're not actively traveling right now, but I'll bring a few things out and share with you what they are. We keep these in the box at all times. These, they're little hot dog trays that we get at Sam's Club. We love these because if we get some snacks, some pretzels or something, Tina can pull these out, put a little bit in their tray and say, all right, hold on to that tray for the rest of the day. And then um, if they want something else, they pass a tray up and we fill it up with stuff and pass it back. You get a whole stack for, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks or something like that. You know what, why don't I pull the box outside and then I can show you all about it. All right, it's getting pretty cold out here, so I'm gonna make this kind of quick. And I built it to hold a bunch of different things, and, and you'll notice there's a bunch of different compartments in here. And let's see here. So notice this space right here. This space is perfect for the box that I built for our Kindles. So we can slide it right in this area, and then we take that box, 
and we plug it in to this uh, power strip that you see here. So now we have power inside the van from this 150 watt inverter that's right here. So we have we have one cable that goes into our cigarette lighter and it comes down into the box and then I have it to where it'll split right here and so we have a couple of cigarette outlet things for different things that we want to power we got a couple usb ones right there and then we've got these extra ones you know we could slide in here in case we need more usb power we can put these anywhere we need to and then if you notice these right here this is actually the charger for our drone for our dji Mavic 2 Pro 2 or something like that. So anyway, I could put drone batteries up here, plug them in, and the charger for that is under here. I don't know if you can see it, but I love double stick tape. And so I double stick tape this stuff to just about everything. So these I got from Walmart. You can go get these for like five, 10 bucks. Uh, this thing I've had a long time and it works pretty well. It's 150 watt. And so we're able to plug in computers, um, chargers, things like that. This box right here is usually where I will put all of my camera batteries, uh, uh, my Canon stuff, GoPro stuff. Notice we have a couple of these uh, USB cords. We'll usually plug them in here. I think this is one of them. We'll plug them in here and then we're able to hook up our uh, GoPro batteries and just set them right in this spot right there. Notice I got a couple uh, flash cards for the camera right there. And then I'll usually have my Canon battery plugged right in here. So no matter what, I'm always ready to shoot something. Not like with a gun, you know, with the camera. This little hole right here is for the camera. When it's on the monopod, I can set the camera in here and then so it'll always be set so we can just pull it out grab it and go this little slot right here i own a technology company so i'm essentially on call 24 7. so wherever we're at i need to make sure that i have my laptop with me so that little slot right there is for my laptop so i can slide it in and it'll be right there and I can also it uses USB-C so I can just plug it in and keep it charged right in its little slot then I don't have to worry about the kids stepping on it dropping something on it and we have this little spot right up here just for miscellaneous stuff like those yogurt raisins which I will probably eat and of course our junior frosty cards uh, so let's put it back in the van so you can see what it's like in all of its glory. So there it is. This is how it sits in the van. All we have to do to get the box powered up is plug it in. Lots of cool red lights and everything. Actually, when, when it's dark, the red light is perfect because you can see what's in the box and it doesn't bother you when you're driving. Well, last thing, last but not least, this little thing right here, this is perfect for Kleenex. And it got a little messed up last time we were out and about, but that holds it on there. So that's our box. And I think that just about wraps up this tour of the BRV. So if you're ever out and about and you see the BRV, chances are it's us. So if you see us, Feel free to just say, hey, what's up? We can explore it, hey, what's up? And we'll say, hey, how's it going? And if you have any questions about this BRV and its greatness, drop a message below. I'll be glad to answer them. If I missed anything, so I think I, I, think I got everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, other, you know, it's just your standard, it's a standard vehicle, right? But if you're thinking about getting one of these and you have a large family, uh, I would say yes, it's probably one of the better towing vehicles out there. I would say stability over power, it's got stability over power. This thing will beat, I would say, any gasoline engine, even the larger ones in a truck. This has probably more power than it. Uh, any truck diesel would blow this thing out of the water, okay? So there's quite a difference between the diesels in a truck and the diesel here, but this would beat uh, even the newer gas ones, I would think, okay? So if you have a large family and you want a good towing vehicle and you see one of these, I would say, you know, go in, hop in it, drive it, see what you think. I would say if you can fit in a truck comfortably, go for a truck. If you can't fit in a truck 
and you need a towing vehicle, then yes, this would be a good towing vehicle for you. If you have any questions on this, or if you want my thoughts on something very specific, feel free to drop a question below and I'll be glad to answer it for you. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to all the adventures that we're gonna have. New baby coming up, moving to Tennessee. Hope you're having a great day and I will see you again really soon. Thanks so much, bye-bye.